creating billions of dollars of products that are sold worldwide in the world market. So you end up with longer lives, greater independence, less stress on your family, dramatically lower cost in the budget, and a larger income. There are four parts to what I'm proposing. We're just now launching the beginning of the discussion. In fact, after this talk, we're going to sit and talk to some experts about it here. And I've been meeting people in Arizona and Washington and elsewhere. Essentially, four parts. Part one is to develop a public-private effort on brain science research designed to maximize the speed with which we thoroughly understand the brain. Model to some extent on the Apollo project and on the Human Genome Project, and designed to really maximize the rate of developing new knowledge. Part two is to modernize the Food and Drug Administration so that we actually have the Food and Drug Administration understanding science in the laboratory and accelerating it getting to the patient rather than inhibiting it getting to the patient. Uh, that plays an enormous role because we don't find a way to fix the Food and Drug Administration. Virtually all of our scientific breakthroughs will in fact be developed outside the United States because it's so much easier to bring them to market outside the U.S. The third thing we, the, the, that I have as part of my general economic plan is zero capital gains tax. And the reason is you want a tremendous inducement for hundreds of billions of dollars of capital to come into the U.S. And part of the goal is to produce 50 to 70 Steve Jobs and Bill Gates in biology. So you have people with new breakthrough ideas. Remember, if you're back talking in 1960, the scale to which we now have computing power would seem absurd. IBM's original estimate in 1954 uh, Tom Watson thought they would sell four computers. Uh, think about how far that was. Okay. And if you look at, how many of you have an iPhone? You have the equivalent, I think, of about a 2003 laptop in terms of computing power. You know, so think about the rate. If you, if you take an overlay of the development of computation and, and wireless capabilities since 1960, and then you have a parallel overlay with health, with, with biology and with brain science, you get a similar kind of explosion of new capabilities, new, new things, new, so, new solutions, new products, in a way that would be extraordinary. Finally, I believe that we have to also look at the use of modern technology and building models of caretaking so that we use everything we're learning, frankly, everything the Japanese are learning. And the Japanese have invested very heavily in robotics for healthcare because they refuse to allow people in their country. Uh, to, to do the work that in this country is often done by people who come here. Uh, and as a result, the Japanese have a huge labor shortage for, for labor-intensive industries. And so they're really trying to figure out, and I'll give you one example that came up in our Alzheimer's working group, which is if you're the spouse and your husband gets Alzheimer's and you get to a point where you have to help him get in and out of bed, as a general principle, the spouse suddenly is in danger of hurting her back trying to help him. Now, there are ways to, to make that dramatically different, and there are ways to use new technology so that you could have, in fact, an intelligent home that actually helped take care of somebody in a way that was both less expensive and had far, was far more convenient and had fewer health problems for the people who are the caregivers. And so those are the four zones I want to work in, uh, and I'm looking forward to, to a meeting with the experts here in a little while to talk about how we go forward. But in the interim, just to come back so you understand why this campaign has been so different. This is a very big idea in an area that I don't know of any political leader as well as hackles that would lead to a dramatic explosion of new science, that would lead directly to a better quality outcome for health, which would lower the cost of health care, which would help solve our long-term budget problems, and would create a huge new zone of growing American jobs. But it requires having a conversation in an area that people just aren't used to talking about politically. And so that's typical of what I'm going to try to do with this campaign, is to lay out a series of breakthroughs, each of which moves us into the future, with, so that when you graduate from college, you're more likely to have a job, and a job that rises in value, and a job that's competitive in the world market, and a job doing something that's both interesting and is very dynamic. And that's sort of the heart of what uh, this campaign's about. So I'd like to, if it's all right, I'm going to toss it open. And I guess if you yell, we'll try to with all due respect to yourself and the people who have Alzheimer's, why are you dealing with small potatoes? The most significant issue in the country from a health perspective right now is the lack of, of physical activity and obesity. It affects more than two-thirds of the people in the country and more than 30 diseases. 
why not take your solutions for the exact reasons you offer and apply them to the problems of obesity and lack of physical activity? Well, uh, look, I, I am in favor of, of uh, us maximizing physical activity and maximizing good diets. Uh, and I had a uh, student the other night who thought, asked me whether this was in, in uh, Windham, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, he was a ninth grader who asked me if I thought it was really appropriate for Congress to pass a directive that pizza is a vegetable. Uh, and I suggested that it probably wasn't, actually. Uh, so I, I agree with you on, on both nutrition and on diet. And then I, at the Center for Health Science, we had a fairly substantial project on diabetes and on avoiding diabetes by having the right diet and the right exercise. Uh, so I'm in agreement with you on that particular zone, but if that doesn't preclude me from also talking about this. So if we, could, we can agree that both of them are important areas. Well, why don't you invest the money in the more the disease that has the more powerful effect on uh, I actually don't think I actually don't think obesity is a problem of money. Obesity is a problem of culture. And this is the problem getting people to get together. Obesity is the problem of getting people to eat less junk food and to walk, and to walk more. And those two things Why can't we do that? Huh? Why can't we do that? Well, we can. Uh, I, actually, I actually recommend to you that there's a, uh, uh, there's a, a company in Green Bay, Wisconsin, which has done a very, very good job with its own employees of getting them and their families to be dramatically healthier by incentivizing good health. Uh, Jeff Bush ran an experiment in Medicaid where if you were diabetic or you were asthmatic, if you took care of yourselves, you got a Christmas bonus because you would save the government so much money by not going to the emergency room that they could afford to actually reward the good behavior. Uh, and they got very substantial changes in behavior because it turned out poor people liked money. It was a very bold breakthrough concept. Yes, ma'am. of the profit motive. They're a function of a really bad government-owned system 
that has no controls and no honesty and no concern for the future. So I think you can have profits and have a healthy society. Yes, sir. Uh, 